to be with you again. My name is Ann Anderson, and I am in a recording studio in Twisp, Washington. This is the recording studio of the Met Howe Arts Alliance, um, an art organization that offers these video lessons for you. So uh, welcome, glad to see you all again, to be with you again. And today we're going to do a lesson, <clears throat> a writing lesson called a Circle Story. You all know what circles are, right? But today we're going to use, uh, we're not going to, the story is not going to be about circles. <clears throat> we're going to use a circle to plan your story. So right now, before we get started with the lesson, I would like for you all to <clears throat> go and get the materials that you need. You will need a pencil. You'll need some lined paper and also some plain paper. And you'll just need to find a comfortable place to sit with your computer so, or your iPad. So I'm going to let you shut off the video for just a few minutes while you get all of those things together and get comfortable and then turn it back on and we will start our lesson together. Okay, so we're gonna start working on our circle stories. And that we're going to use, uh, we're gonna use a book to help us understand what a circle story is. So I wanna share that book with you first. This is a book called The Snowy Day, and it's by an author whose name is Ezra Jack Keats. You've probably seen this book because a lot of, a lot of kids know this uh, before they even come to school. A lot, of them, a lot of your parents read this story to you when you're really little. Mr. Keats wrote a lot of stories, so if you like this story, you can go to the library and read other stories that he's written. And he wrote about kids in his neighborhood. And he lived in a neighborhood with lots and lots of different kinds of families. Uh, this book is about a character named Peter. Peter was about four years old in this story. And, uh, and he wrote several books about Peter. Some of you might know the book called Peter's Chair, which was actually written about Peter when he was a little bit older than, than in this story. But let's read the story together. And while you're listening, these are the things I want you to be thinking about. Think about how the story begins, how it ends, and then what goes in between the beginning and the ending. So after we've read the story, we'll be talking about the beginning and the ending and what goes in the middle. All right, so the story is called The Snowy Day. Now, I don't know about you, but where we're living right here in Twist, Washington, it is a snowy day today. So this story could be about something happening right here in our neighborhood, the snowy day. One winter morning, Peter woke up and looked out the window. Snow had fallen during the night. It covered everything as far as he could see. After breakfast, he put on his snowsuit and ran outside. The snow was piled up very high along the street to make a path for walking. Crunch, 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 his feet sank into the snow. He walked with his toes pointing out, like this, and then he walked with his toes pointing in, like that. Then he dragged his feet slowly to make tracks, and he found something sticking out of the snow that made a new track. It was a stick, a stick that was just right for smacking a snow-covered tree. Down fell the snow, plop, on top of Peter's head. So you can see the tracks he's making in the snow. He thought it would be fun to join the big boys in their snowball fight, but he knew he wasn't old enough, not yet. So he made a smiling snowman, and he made angels. He picked up a handful of snow, and another, and still another. He, picked it, he packed it round and firm and put the snowball in his pocket for tomorrow. And then he went into his warm house. He told his mother all about his adventures while she took off his wet socks. And he thought and thought and thought about them. While he slept, he dreamed that the sun had melted all of the snow away. But when he woke up, his dream was gone. The snow was still everywhere, and new snow was falling. 
After breakfast, he called to his friend from across the hall, and they went out together into the deep, deep snow. And that is the end of the story. All right. So I hope you were listening really carefully to that story. Do you remember how it started? How did it start? It started with Peter waking up in the morning and looking out his window and seeing snow on the ground. And I know many of you live in places where you have snow in the winter, so you can probably imagine what he felt like. I know I feel really excited the first day of the year that I see snow on the ground when I wake up. And you can tell that Peter was excited too. And then think about the ending of that story. Do you remember how it ended? It ended with P Peter going to sleep, thinking that the snow was going to be gone the next day, and then waking up and finding out that the snow was still on the ground. And he was very excited to see the snow still on the ground. So it kind of began and ended with Peter waking up, looking out of the window, and seeing the snow on the ground, right? Now, all of you know what a circle is. A circle is a, a figure that goes around and doesn't really have a beginning and an end. It kind of starts and goes all the way around and then connects back up with where it starts. And that's, that's kind of what this story does. So we're going to look at, we're going to look at putting the, the parts of the story onto a circle. And we can see how that helps us think about writing our own story. So we're going to look at two versions. We're going to look at a version with words on it first, and I'm going to remind you of the things that happened in the story. And then we're going to look at a version that you might decide to use on your own, and that's a version with just pictures and no words. All right, so here is our circle. And you see some words around it, and I'm going to share with you what those are. This is the story of Peter, but it's, it's just... The, the main things that happened, and it's, it goes around in a circle like I was telling you. So at the top of the circle, you can see the words, Peter sees the snow. That's the first thing that happened. He puts his snowsuit on. He walks in some funny ways. He makes tracks with a stick. He watches a snowball fight. He wants to build snow angels. I think he also built a, a snowman. He put a snowball in his pocket, comes in and gets warm, goes to sleep, and then he wakes up and sees the snow again. And you can see this is where the circle comes together again. It starts and ends with Peter looking out of the window and seeing snow. So this is a way, this is a way that you can plan a circle story of your own. You can make a circle on a piece of paper, think about how your story is going to begin and how it's going to end in the same way, and then put all of the things that are going to happen in the middle around the circle. Now, for you, it might be a snowy day. You could talk about a snowy day going skiing or a snowy day playing with your friends outside or a snowy day going to the loop. But it also could be a day at the beach. It could be a day at school. It could be a day on the weekend when you're playing with your friends or with your grandparents. So any kind of a day at all where you begin by waking up and it goes all the way until you wake up the next morning will work as a circle story. So here's one more way that you might think of, of doing your circle story, especially if you'd rather wait and use your words for your story and you want to just use pictures for your plan. So you'll see I did exactly the same thing, it's the same story that we just read, but instead I just used pictures around the circle. It started with Peter watching the snow he put on his snowsuit, he made tracks, he used a stick to knock the snow out of the tree and make tracks in the snow with a stick. Here's a snow fight. He watched the snow fight, but he was too little. He made snow angels, put snowballs in his pocket, came in, got warm, took a bath, and then he went back to sleep. And then the next morning he woke up just like the story started by looking out of the window and seeing the snow. So when you plan your story, you can do it either way. You can do it with words or you can do it with pictures. But remember to make a big circle and decide how your story is going to begin and end, the beginning of the day, the beginning of the next day, and then all of the things that are going to happen during the day. If you do your 
if you do your plan, uh, your, your story map with a picture, remember that when you write your story, you're going to look at each one of these and write out sentences for each thing that happens during the day. Okay? I hope you're ready to write your story, and then when you finish writing it, I want you to share it with your parents and with your classmates and with your teacher. I also want you to think about doing some illustrations. You notice the illustrations in uh, Mr. Keat's book were very simple, and I hope they gave you some ideas for how you might do the illustrations for your own story, and that would make it even more special if it had pictures to go along with it. Okay, we've looked at the, we've looked at the diagrams uh, and the circle for how you plan a story, and now it's your turn. It's your turn to think about the kind of day you'd like to write about, uh, put, put all of the things that you would do during that day around the circle, and then when you finish, write, if you, especially if you write pictures around the circle, then make sure that you make those into sentences for your story. And then once you're finished with the writing of your story, use your art materials and your plain paper to draw some really nice illustrations to go with your story. You saw in the book that we read that Mr. Keats had beautiful illustrations for all the things that Peter did in the story. So you can do that with your story as well. All right? I hope you have a, a great time writing your story. I hope that you can share it with your, with your family, with your classmates, and with your teacher. And I'm looking forward to being with you again next time, either on the video or maybe in your classroom. Bye-bye.